subwoofers are probably the easiest thing to review. And it's for two different reasons. Number one, if I want to go subjective, I can make anything up. The subwoofer's tight, punchy, fast, has transient capability, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make up a bunch of crap because here's what's going to happen. As soon as you get it and you put it in your room, it's going to sound completely different if you move it one foot over, two feet over, put it in the corner, put it in the middle of the room. It's going to sound different than your buddy's room. It's going to sound different than the reviewer's room, my room. And that's why when it comes to talking about subwoofers, you're not going to get a lot from me. All right, what you need with subwoofers is data. You need to know how low can it get and how loud can it play. And then you need to know what's the size because you need to know if it's going to look good in your room, if it's going to fit the right space, what it looks like, the aesthetic of it, and what kind of features does it have? Does it have built-in equalization? Does it have an app that you can use? Those are the things that matter. It's not superfluous words. A colleague of mine in this field, James Larson from Audioholics, who I reference a lot when I talk about subwoofer reviews, he does a great job at reviewing subwoofers, and he provides a lot more subjective feedback than I do, but he also provides data. So if you want another opinion, Go check James Larson's review out for these Arendal 1V and 1S from the 1961 series. But for me, what we're going to stick to right now is just data. Now, I will tell you that these re these reviews, these speakers came from me from Arendal directly. I was loaned them for review. I listened to them. I tested them out. And then I sent them back. And I was not paid. But I do have an affiliate link if you want to use that after watching this review and you feel compelled to buy either or both. I don't know of these subwoofers. Please use that affiliate link. It does help me out with a small commission at no additional cost to you. There. Okay. So let's start off with the 1961S. I'm on my website right now, which is Aaron's Audio Corner. And here we go. This is a stock photo of it. So it's not a large subwoofer. It's, it's basically kind of squished down, which means that it would actually probably go pretty well against a wall with EQ Mode 2. And I'll show you the data for that right now. This is what you get. EQ Mode 1 is in black and two is in blue. So when I say putting it in EQ mode two against the wall, why do I say that? Because what happens when you boundary load something, when you put any low frequency driver against a wall, especially even the floor, there is additional gain due to the boundary loading effect. So all of that additional SPL that's going around the subwoofer is being reinforced by the wall. And in some cases, that reinforcement might be a little bit too much. So you're going to want to maybe attenuate that a little bit. And that's where this blue line, this sealed EQ2 mode, would probably come into play if you feel like the subwoofer is a little bit too boomy for your room. Another thing I like about these subwoofers is that they have equalization. That goes for both the 1S and the 1V. So you can pull up the back of the speaker or the subwoofer and make some adjustments with this little menu and do some equalization, some parametric equalization. So let's say, for example, that you put these subwoofers in a room, you got them in a location that suits your room the best, but you really can't put them anywhere else, and you need to do equalization. You got a strong peak around 60 hertz that's just, when, when a kick drum kicks, it's just way too much compared to the other frequencies. So with these subwoofers, you can dial that down and adjust it and get it more in line with the overall frequency response in your room and have a better overall sound. Now the response is tailored downward a little bit below about 60 Hertz. So you can see it kind of flat lines around 80 to maybe about hundred Hertz, 150, 200 Hertz through this region. And then we see it kind of starts to fall off there. It's, it's a relatively slow fall off rate, but it does start falling off, which puts its F3, if I were to compare it to 100 Hertz, that's about 82 decibels. So I'm looking for 79 decibels. And that's somewhere in this 60, maybe 55 hertz region or so for the 1S. For the 1S, this is the different output capability. At low volume, I've measured it at about 62 or so decibels on average through this region right here. Medium volume with 0.1 volt input is about 82 decibels. And the maximum output capability that I could get for this 1S subwoofer was about 106, 107 decibels. Again, anechoic at one meter reference. In terms of maximum output capability in the dynamic range, maximum output capability for the subwoofer in free space at one meter is about 107 decibels through the 80 to 100 Hertz region. If I align that to the 84 decibels and try to see what's the response on the low end compared to the 84 decibel output, which is here in blue, then we can see that compared to that, you're losing about 
172, 276, about four decibels at 30 hertz of dynamic range, which just means that if you're plotting along and you're listening at around 80 decibels or so, and then you were to crank it up, you're theoretically going to lose about four decibels of output at 30 hertz compared to that median output if you crank it all the way up. So that is how we define dynamic range. Now let's take a look at the 1V subwoofer, which is about $200. So $200, $200 more. Uh, the 1S is $999, the 1V is $1199, shipped from Rendell directly. And here we have the different modes. So the 1V has four different modes. It has two EQ modes for sealed, and then two EQ modes for ported, or basically two EQ modes, but you can run this in a ported configuration as opposed to sealed only, which is how the 1S comes. So in ported mode and sealed mode, what we have is the EQ. They're kind of the same actually, sealed versus vented EQ1, black versus red. Look at this, they're, they're actually kind of the same. There's about one decibel or so more output with the vented EQ. Same thing really for the EQ2 mode, sealed in blue versus ported or vented in green, same sort of deal. Now EQ1 mode, just like with the 1S, for the 1V has additional output capability below about, in this case, I would say mainly about 30 Hertz. You have about a five decibel gain in the EQ1 mode compared to the EQ2 mode, regardless of vented or sealed. These are the different output levels starting at 63, 64, and then around 82 or so, and then maximum output is around 107 decibels. If you compare this like I did for the previous subwoofer, this is what you have. So at 30 Hertz, there is about 74 versus 79. So about five decibels of compression at 30 Hertz, about two to three decibels at 40 Hertz. And at 20 Hertz, it's about 65 versus 74. So about nine decibels of compression on this guy as well. Now, when I wanna talk about maximum SPL per a standard, there is the CEA 2010A measurement set that you will use a tone burst and it's like a whoop, like a quick whoop, 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 like a thunk. I don't know how else to describe it, but that's what it sounds like. And in doing so, what it does is it measures the output, but it also measures the harmonic distortion. And it basically goes up to a point where it says, all right, this harmonic distortion is higher than the threshold that the spec allows. Therefore, this is a maximum output. So what I'm giving you here is both the Rendall subwoofers, the 1S and the 1V, but I'm also showing you the RSL Speedwoofer 12S because I tested these all on the exact same day under the exact same conditions. And I wanna note that if you're comparing my results to Audioholics, James Larson's from Audioholics results, his are gonna be about three decibels lower because he is taking the RMS power or SPL and I'm taking the peak SPL. So that's a difference of about three decibels Mine's gonna be about three decibels higher if you're comparing that way. Just keep that in mind. So when I look at the Arendal, we can see that the 1V subwoofer has definitely more output than the 1S. If you go down to 16 Hertz, 1V has about 102 decibels, 1S has about 93. So nine decibel higher output capability for the 1V in terms of the CEA 2010 spec. But you'll also note that the RSL Speedwoofer has higher output than both of these guys. And it actually shows to be the case where the RSL is generally higher output capability. I think I made up a word, up to about 40 Hertz as we see here, but above 40 Hertz, that's where the Arendal subwoofers really shine. So they actually have the capability to have a little bit more mid range or mid base punch. Whereas the RSL is gonna have the capability to get lower but it's not gonna achieve as high SPL levels above about 40 Hertz or so. The thing to keep in mind though, is that the RSL Speedwoofer is still bigger than both the 1S and the 1V. When you're trying to get output capability, you're gonna to have to give up something either in cost or foot space. And in this particular case, the RSL does get lower, it costs less, but it's a good bit bigger than both of these subwoofers. So I think the Arendal probably makes more sense when you're talking about needing more foot space and maybe you don't have a lot of floor space in your living room or something like that. Maybe the Arendal makes a little bit more sense. And I could also see one making the case that if you have less floor space, then maybe you're using these in a room that's joined to another room or an apartment or a condo or something like that, where the lower output capability of this subwoofer 
maybe isn't as big a deal because you're going to be putting it next to wall. You're going to get a little bit of reinforcement from that. So there's different ways of kind of viewing this data and seeing what makes sense to you. But again, ultimately, that's what the data is for. It makes a lot more sense for me to do that than to tell you this thing sounds X, Y, or Z and use any adjectives I can, which are really meaningless. Now you've got hard data. Hopefully you can make the decision that makes the most sense for you through this. If you have any questions, please let me know. Also consider that Arendal does have a, I think it's a 60 day return window. So if you want to buy these and try them out, then you can do that. And if you don't like them for whatever reason, then you can send them back. I also mentioned again, cheap plug, my affiliate link. I'll have it in the description below. Please feel free to use that if you would like to support the channel and you appreciate the reviews that I do. It doesn't change the data, but it just helps me and I would appreciate it. I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.